Hey, what's up? It's John Kizzy. You know who is he, a.k.a. Philly G, because they know who I be. And I'm here with King Tigger. What's up? And hey, we started a podcast. And today we have two guests, uh, two up-and-coming actors. Should we say up-and-coming or... or yeah, you rising actors. Uh, you know, rising actors. I almost said, "Oh, sh- should we say you're coming?" And then I'm like, "No, nah, that's with that P Diddy stuff. We gotta stay." <laughs> 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 no one wants to say that. <laughs> Can't even gussy it up and say you have arrived. Even yeah. that is bad. Now. Yeah, <laughs> you can't even say that. Yeah. Anyways, we got Nathan. We got Kyle, and I hope they put their names on the screen. So you can get the information, the um, um, Instagrams, and all that. That was that was. It made it. That was. Black. It got on there. <laughs> it got on there. <laughs> oh wait, wait. All right, we're gonna get his name on the screen there. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> I got it. There you go. You got some editing to do on that. <laughs> no, yeah, we ain't got no editing. I'm keeping it raw, perfect. uncut. Yeah. <laughs> this is raw, uncut. Yeah. Yeah. So they get to see this. All right. So, um, yeah, we're here to uh, talk about movies, yeah. um, short films. I guess that's the same thing, ain't it? Just, small, just, just shorter. Just shorter. Yeah. And, um, and music, because... <laughs> I just, fig- just found out. Found just out. found out. Yeah, yeah. He, he spits. Yeah. All right. So, he um. No, he, he said he writes about rhymes. To find out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he says he writes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I didn't even ask if he spit. Yeah. Maybe. You, I do. Are you one of Drake's Ghost Riders? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> he was on vacation. That's why he lost the Kendrick. <laughs> I left all my bling at home. Ah, uh, see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm <laughs> no, 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 no. Tonight, that, that, that's, that's, that's the, Fuck that's the most you'll hear. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> yeah. And then it's probably going to continue because he didn't get his say. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, would you like to start today? Uh, actually, we'll start with Nathan, just to introduce yourself to the, to the podcast and uh, tell us a little about yourself. Um, my name's uh, Nathan Godfrey. Um, I'm originally from a place called Liverpool. Um. I, uh, I'm an actor from Halifax. Uh, yeah, uh, and I, uh, I've, I've acted in several different films. Um, one of them was 17 Bricks. Yeah. Uh, another one was uh, The Ark of Noah, which we're going to be talking about today. And, um, and obviously Unreasonable Rob, which I did with a fellow, uh, former battle rapper who passed away a couple, two years ago now, sadly, named Pat Stay. Nice. Yeah, I've seen that 17 Bricks. Yeah, that was good. That was that was funny. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really like the the boss. For yeah, <laughs> uh, the puppet. Yeah. How long did you have to put that together? Seventy two, seventy. It was twenty uh, forty eight hours. Forty eight hour film hours. festival. Forty eight hours. That's even yeah. crazy. Yeah, the forty forty foot, forty foot, forty eight hour film festival. Um, Start to finish. Yeah, we we talked about that when Mark and Leanne yeah. were on the show. That's yeah. crazy. It was uh, that was a fun. <laughs> that was that was funny. Yeah, that was funny. Um, drawing on the abs. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Everything yeah. about us. You is... cannot leave that part alone. Just so you know, the abs. <laughs> oh, we the abs were the, the, it was the main part. And I know the abs need to be on there. They need, they need to look real. I know. <laughs> so I wish I could just... do it. I'd have to shave though. <laughs> yeah. No, Mark just, just shave just the right abs into it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. I um want to introduce yourself there, Kyle. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Kyle Andrea. Uh, I've been. Well, actually, my main thing was rapping and producing. I've been doing that since 2005. Nice. So it's been a while. Okay. And um, I've done a lot of shows, performing around the provinces, and mainly Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, Maritimes, mm-hmm. uh, PEI and stuff. Uh, and it's just within the last couple of years, I've kind of started dabbling with the acting. I've always been into videos and video production and stuff like that. And uh, But just the last couple of years, I've really, really head first into it almost to the point where I put my music aside yeah. and now I'm doing this full time besides my full time job yeah, yeah. but I'm from Middle Sackville I was born in Hel- well, born in Halifax grew up in Middle Sackville I've been there literally my whole life okay. Yeah, okay. bounced around I did live in Dartmouth like yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm back in sackful. Everyone, I'm yeah. back in sackful. Everyone lived in Dartmouth at one yeah. point in their life. Yeah. I'm back in sackful now. So. I think that's like a trial that you have to go through in HRM. Yeah. yeah. You have to at least a year in Dartmouth, you know, like in Korea, that, how you have to be in the military for a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's our thing, yeah. Yeah. And I was on podcast. That's where I was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was. <laughs> I did my time on podcast. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Good old days. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good one. That's yeah, a, that's a fun street. Yeah. I was on the balcony once, had a smoke, and I swear to God, I seen a live action Tom and Jerry. Oh no. This pizza delivery guy went up to the door to deliver a pizza. Here you go. Some crackhead went into his car, took a pizza, and ran. Mm. Around and they just chase each other around the building four times oh, until wow. the delivery guy just gave up. I was like, I was just, I was like, he said, you know what? <laughs> it, I was just on the balcony. I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> Pinecrest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Welcome to Dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good old Pinecrest. Pine yeah. It was just a cigarette for a minute. I questioned, is this just a cigarette? Yeah. <laughs> am yeah. I seeing this? So, um, did you guys, uh, so say, what was your first, uh, acting? Um, my, my first acting I did way back, actually. I did film school way back in 2011. My first acting gig was, a a film called, uh, One for the Road. And literally just a film project we did is really, really dog crap quality and stuff. You, you, it's like 460p or... That's what you showed me, right? Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, really yeah. crappy one. But my actual real first thing, first acting gig, really when I got really serious into it was, again, a reasonable Rob with Pat Stay and Mark Swatsky. So, yeah. Cool. And, and, and just definitely, Pat really just brought out the inner me, brought out my, the acting and made me believe in myself and Less. all kind of stuff. So, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. I didn't see season two yet. But... You didn't see the swear net version? No. Just the no. YouTube version? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Definitely, definitely check out the swearing. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. Yeah, it was, uh, just the quality went a little bit. Oh, wait, wait yeah, that's what that, that's what, so much in that's between what filming the first one and yeah. the second one. They're like, yeah. but uh, yeah, it was just yeah. How about yourself, Kyle? When did I start acting? Yeah, officially. Um, well, oh, when did you start to take it serious? Rob was, was my first real acting job, my first paid gig. Okay, but like. Yeah, I don't count music videos and shit as acting, so... True, true that. That's just performing. Performing yeah. your music in a fucking video, right? I don't know. Can we swear on here? Yeah, oh, of course. Okay, I didn't know. So. <laughs> I didn't I'm know trying to bite my tongue and, <laughs> trying to bite my tongue and shit. Yeah. Oh, no. Dog crap instead of, you know... Oh, uh, yeah. No, you ain't got to bite shit. your tongue. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, perfect. Yeah, I know you two have so, this yeah, thing where you can't curse in the first little bit, but we don't follow that. And that happened by fluke. Because Pat messaged me, he knew. Okay, I'm, I'm. I've also been in the body removal business, so we deal with. Uh, like my family has a business. We we remove human remains. Oh shit! Medical examiners, so like homicides, suicides, accidents, you name it, we do everything. So uh, Pat knew this, so he said, "What can you get me? Can you get me a casket, something for this funeral scene?" And he, I, I said, "Well." I can get you a cremation casket because we own Dartmouth Crematorium. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I can get you that, but you're going to have to dress it up. It's just a fucking, it's just a box. It's an ugly fucking pine, not even pine box. It's like press wood because it's just going to be burnt. Right. So it's not meant to look good. <laughs> so he said, that, he, sent me, he asked me if I could send him some pictures. So I sent him some pictures. He said, that's perfect. He's like, not really, but we'll, we'll make it work. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, I go there, I bring him the box. I brought my suit just in case because I knew it was a funeral scene. Yeah. Next thing you know, they're asking, "Who else here? Who else here is going to be in the film? Who's going to be in the film? Do you? Are you going to be in the film?" So they come up to me. I said, "I got a suit." They said, "Go put it on." <laughs> I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Next thing you know, I'm in the scene, front row of the funeral in fucking that episode. Nice. And then next, and then that night, Pat called me, thanked me for coming out and bringing the props and helping them dress it up and being in the film, and asked me if I want to come shoot the next day. And then he did it again the next day. So he had me on three sets back to back to back. And I got paid for every day that I was there. So I was like, shit. And then ever since then, I was like, okay, I like this. And then, and then obviously I met Mark. And then I was in Buddy Wild. And yeah. Yeah. But Ark of Noah, I don't know if you want to. Yeah. So the Ark of Noah really happened was uh, how it really happened was basically we, we, had, a fr we had a friend 
a mutual friend, me and him, that we knew that was that reached out, reached out to me, and he had his project, and it was very, it very started off being very like blues cluesy ish, like it, very it, it, cartoony, very, very cartoony, very cartoony, and we, he was so dead adamant on that, and then basically I invited Kyle to to it, and uh, we were working together and stuff, and then then our then our mutual friend just disappeared. Yeah, he, just uh, flaked, he flaked out, just flaked on us, and then. And then we then we brought um, our friend Steve in, and he helped as well with it. And yeah, Steve Bootier, good Steve friend of mine who I've known for a long time since way back, way back, yeah. early school days. And then we we just basically made a group, and we all working together, coming up with ideas of what the show's going to start, how the show's going to be. But it completely changed. It went from this cartoony blues clues, like he almost wanted it to be like a. Like you were just some kind of drug addict or something, living in his ho- living yeah, in his was grungy really apartment, yeah. and all of his friends are cartoons. And I was like, it's kind of cool, but it's we don't have that kind of fucking budget. No, like, no, I was thinking of budgets. Like too. then we got to pay a fucking animator and all this shit, and right. I was like, yeah, you come up with characters. Like there's a lot of fucking work that goes into making a cartoon, let alone a series slash cartoon like that. But um, so it completely changed tra- trajectory. Completely, we just. Basically, re- started from scratch and rewrote, and then we came up with Ark of Noah. Okay. Dude, we actually originally said you know it's Ark, but we looked up and it was copyrighted. So yeah, you can't touch that. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Even spelled with the Ark too, like the, yeah. the K's in. It's spelled with the C, yeah, with the C instead of the K, or yeah, yeah. That's exactly how they spelled it. We were like, oh, maybe we can get away with that. And then I googled it, and I was Nothing. like, fuck, no. it's oh. already a show. Yeah. So. um I thought it was a short film. It's it's a series. It's a sh- okay. Here we started with the series. This is how it started, and then uh, Megan St. Rose. I don't know if you know who she is. She does the morning shows on the country station there. She's actually just filling in for the one who's gone for yeah. the time being. She's on maternity leave. Doing the yes, yeah. So, anyways, she. I don't know how you met her. Uh, actually, she, she. I met her actually through another mutual friend um, named. Uh, Chris, uh, I can't remember his last name now, but he, he brought me out to uh, uh, downtown, um, the, the Pint, and we went out there, and she was at like a party and stuff, and they, they sung and worked out, they were like hanging together and stuff, and literally I met her there, <coughs> and literally I didn't speak to her for like six, seven months after I met her, and then she reached out to me, we, we, we would kind of talk here and there in six, six months, but not very much, and then she reached out, she was like, hey, I see you doing a lot of film work, and I see you doing something really successful, if, you need, if I'm looking to do some looking to do a project with some passionate people and stuff. And then I was like, okay. And then I uh, added her to our little Facebook group we have on, on Messenger. And she came in, and we, it was history from there. Nice. Well, so basically when she came in, she we had a few meetings, and uh, we filled her in, caught her up to speed to where we were at with, this, with the scripts and ideas and characters and all that stuff. Loved it. Loved the idea. Then next thing you know, it was like maybe a couple months go by, and then she says... Okay, we got to make a fucking short film because the CBC short film face off just popped up and she was like we need to fucking enter it. It's it's a chance to win 30k towards your next project, which would be towards the series. Oh. Okay. So she managed she put her feelers out for a production crew, found us a fucking wicked cinematographer, Jeff Babineau, and a wicked first AC, uh Jordan of Jordan Burns. Burns, Burns. Yeah. I don't know how I keep forgetting his last name. Jordan Burns, he's a fucking oh, amazing guy. Me yeah. and him cooped ourselves up in the studio for fucking two days just producing, editing the fucking short film. Just, we did not leave. Nice. And, uh, but yeah, you probably, well, you've seen the short film. I let you get oh, a yeah, sneak yeah. peek. So we, the, he's the radio guy, the other radio guy. Oh, yeah, so okay, okay. That, that was just a surprise addition to the movie, so, like, <laughs> it was just something that happened in the production room, so that's, that's, I don't want to talk too much about that, but yeah, so she basically whipped us all together, she said, you guys need to fucking put this short film together now, and she she got us all together, and fucking, obviously, like, it just turned out amazing. Yeah, I, I and, thought uh, it was... But there was probably nope. 11, 12 of us in total for in the yeah. crew, like, we had me, you, Steve... Jeff, Jordan, Megan, uh, Maria. We had she, oh, we had a props girl. Yeah, we had a yeah. we had a props girl from. She worked on the trades and Trailer Park Boys and stuff like that. Like the new Trailer Park Boys movie she did too. I think. There was just quite a few members that I actually recruited as well. Yeah. That you know we just started breaking. Out, it was like one weekend. It was like a not even forty eight hour period that we just had people keep coming we were just in. Just pulling and things coming together. together like last that's, minute. Oh, that's cool. And then we had yeah. to start casting. Like we had a big scene. It's we had a big scene with 
basically wasn't a huge scene in the movie, but to us it was a big scene because it, it involved a lot of people and a lot of organization to make it happen. You mentioned uh, Patricia. Is she, was, is she a social worker? Patricia. Uh, is that... She was an extra in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, I went to school with her, her son. You know what's kids, funny? Kids, it's because uh, I watched it on my TV. Right. And my girl came so down. So you recognized her. Oh. No, I didn't. My girlfriend is a social worker. She okay. jumped up and was like, is Stevens. that Patricia? Patricia Stevens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She I jumped... went to school with both of her sons. Yeah, she jumped up and asked, is that Patricia? Like, I knew her. I was like, <laughs> yeah, like is that her? I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. But she's like, yeah, what? Is, she's yeah. a social worker. I went to school. I know, I know her. I, was I didn't like, know she was a social. I always wondered what she did. I, I never really asked her. So. Now you don't now have I to. <laughs> <I'm a person. laughs> yeah. Um, she's a big supporter, man. She she loves everything we're doing. Like She's always asking about it. I don't want to spoil anything about the movie. Like, so she was asking me about the whole thing, and I was like, I can only tell you so much. Like, Come to the screen, and Pat, you'll see it all. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, well, speaking of that, let's uh, play the trailer right quick. Sure. So, um, so people at home can see it. I was going to say so that you can He's see it, but I forgot out. you seen you, you seen the you seen the um, the short film. Yeah. But um, I've seen so much. I like to recall it. Right? So, he didn't okay. watch it. No, I watched. Well, I, I watched this series right now, so my mind's there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's an old ass series too. So Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm watching that. So. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll, we'll let it play right now. This is Noah. A uh, simple guy, really. Yeah. Noah has two friends. She's a fucking piece of shit. She's the reason why you have to fucking wear glasses. Dude, stare at the fucking sun. It'll make you see better. I've got something perfect for you. It's for a national brand. I was going to do it myself, but I'm a little too nervous. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? With dreams to become a successful actor. Just actual shit. <laughs> Thought you're lying, kid. Nice. He always manages to f- things up. Uh, it looks funny even without yeah. audio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you did that. That would drove me nuts. Eating that cereal off that envelope. That I- it was soggy as all. Yeah, hell, I couldn't. Man. I, I had couldn't. No idea it was sitting in there for I a couldn't do it, man. That he's a pooper. Right. <laughs> he, did, he does some yeah, shit, man. For acting, like he he really. I am really. Fucking, de- yeah, I'm really uh really dedicated to my craft. He really you definitely are. Cause yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do it. I yeah. tell you that. Yeah. I gagged when I first seen it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I will, I, will, I don't know if I would have been able to do that. I'm not much for the soggy uh, yeah. whole wheat, whatever the fuck that was. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the part where I hit the newspapers. The, 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 the first time, like the first, like I feel like ten times they could, they kept missing me. And mm-hmm. then, and then Mark, as you know, Mark Swatsky came in first, first try, hit me straight in the head, like. Oh yeah, he, the, the he wanted it so bad. Throwing arm, like wow, yeah, yeah. it was crazy. So See, that's where you gotta, that like, that's where you gotta make it so you can get that stunt double in there for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that yeah. was fun. And it was raining. The best part about that scene, the newspaper scene, is it was fucking raining. And it was like 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Oh, nice. We made it look like it was a beautiful, yeah. sunny morning. Yeah. I, I, that's that's what I thought it was. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah so that's the, that's the best part about making movies. It's like knowing what the fucking, what's going on behind the scenes and then seeing the final result. It's like, wow. I can't believe we pulled that off. Same with like him yeah. in the kitchen eating his breakfast. It was dark overcast and like we had to make it look like the sun morning sun was shining through on mm-hmm. onto him so they, they, they just really sold that that's jordan jordan burns really knows his fucking shit man. Same, having mark on there too those two working together it's just like those guys know their stuff they know what they're doing well so. mark actually full credit to mark for the cereal the envelope in the bowl of cereals right. that was mark's idea, was mark's idea. yeah because it was just he was just going to drop the rent money on the counter and mm-hmm. say here's the money i owe you but instead he was just like mark was like how about we just how about his dad comes and throws it in the milk yeah. and then he slurps it off like just eats some of this <laughs> i was like dude that has to fucking happen <laughs> I think we only had to do it twice, once or yeah. twice, and it was like, okay, that's... When it comes to crazy stuff, I'm, I'm just like, got to get it done, got to do it super quickly, 
because, you know, got to get right on point maybe two or three times because I was like, I don't want to do it again. Yeah, so. you did really fucking good on that, actually. <laughs> who's who's the person that plays your dad and uh, mom? Uh, Frank, Frank, Frank Kirby. Kirby. Oh. He's calm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's in a lot of stuff, he's believe like, it or not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He goes on like every background gig you'll know. Like, every production in the city is always on Any background. Any show that's ever been here. He's like the background he? king, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, today, actually, he just announced he's doing like a, a big food chain commercial. Yeah, so that I could be that. actually a good. Door that could be a door opening. Like, yeah. shit. Nice. Especially if it's like McDonald's or something. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. We need yeah. some sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. So, um, hey, we started a podcast. Next. What's the name? Frank Kirby? He's no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good though. No, you guys like you guys are doing your thing. Yeah. Right. And we appreciate you guys coming out, sharing it with us. And, and it's fun, man. It's just it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like so I guess my question would be was like we kinda got what your background story was. What inspired you to really get into acting? Uh, um to really get into acting? Yeah. To get me I was a uh, uh, uh form of battle rack. Battle rapper, I was talking about it on Pat's day. Yep. Literally, I uh, I met Mark Mark Swatsky. Literally, I met him one time on a production, mm-hmm. and uh, I was helping this African guy do like his music video, which was very like one one wide shot, yeah, one big wide shot and everything. And literally, it was really crap. And Mark was basically just like, we did it and stuff, but Mark would always bring me on more productions. Right. And one of the productions was with Pat Stay. Okay. And literally, I helped on set a few times doing. Doing a little bit of stuff, tweaking, you know, uh, setting up lights, you know, small things behind behind the scenes. And Lily, uh, we were in the car one time, and Pat just goes to me and he says, "Hey, pal, how's it going?" I'm like, "I'm good." So what? What kind of what kind of, what kind of porn are you into? Who's your favorite porn star? <laughs> and, I, and I was totally taken back, and yeah, I was yeah. basically like, "What? What's going on?" And then that whole interaction uh, basically uh, came into unreasonable Rob because mm-hmm. the whole interaction thought we were, that was perfect for the character, right? And Literally after that, and I just start doing more acting gigs. More acting gigs. Pat would really motivate me to do more stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and after that, I got more more gigs as it happened, and just just keep letting it go and keep, keep going towards go. my goals, right? Yeah. So what would you say your end goal is? My end goal is uh, definitely to um, to to try to make it for Hollywood. Definitely try to make it for Hollywood, but not just to be the the, the best version of myself, the best actor I can be. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. You want that Hollywood-ish goal. Right? Yeah, yeah, it'd be really cool. You know, that, and, but, but I like bringing, yeah. not just myself, but bringing all the people who would help me, all the people I'm working with, with to, on the level, just like Pat, yeah. that was Pat's goal, too, is yeah. everyone with him up, uplifting everybody, right? Mm. That's, that's the main goal. That's good, right? He never seemed to put himself above any, anybody, man. That's it was just like, yeah. if he want, like, he would call you, and you were just his buddy, and he mm. wanted you to come help. Like, yeah. just come work on this film with yeah. us, man, please. And he appreciated everything. Like, yeah, everything. And made that, he... Made that very well known, like mm-hmm. how much he appreciated everybody. Yeah, which is good, right? Yeah. So, it's not many of those people in the world that no. can say that. Especially a guy like old. Pat's caliber where yeah. he had so much respect and so many people knew him all around mm-hmm. the world. And it's like you'd think guys like him would just be cocky, yeah. and exactly. but no, he wasn't like that. He had a really, really, really good heart, and he was lo- loved to look out for other people, helping yeah. other people. Like yeah. The battle Pat and the and the Pat we that I got to meet mm-hmm. during all that, two, two completely different, different people, yeah. Right. Two different people. Yeah. I, n- I never got to meet right? him. So, oh, no. no. Yeah. I met him once. Once. By well, I used to, to interact. I was at his first ever official battle at okay. the Elements League back in the graph pit in Halifax. It's me and a bunch of my buddies. We used to go to every fucking single one of them. Nice. I never got into battle raps until like maybe a year ago. Oh, really? Holy fuck. Yeah. You it's were just, way late on the yeah, journey. There's so shit. many things in the world to get into. <laughs> yeah, it's hard I to know. get into everything. Like, you don't know how much... Even, like, now that we do the podcast, I'm up on hip-hop music. Yeah. But for a while, I was such a Tech 9 fan that I didn't care who else was coming out. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah, I was just true. listening to I that. I was hired to Tech 9 there yeah. when I was in high school, man. Because I, I... Blew up, basically. I almost didn't know who the Meagles were until they broke up. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I did either. Like, no, it's, yeah. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> there's just so... Well, that's like, yeah, there's so much interest, stuff. Though. That's the thing. Like, uh... Yeah, like but, if I like, was it <coughs> we were talking about one time, you're like, Man, when did this come out? And we told you, you're like, Oh, I didn't know that's when Tech Nine. Yeah, I know. That's like <laughs> Even the Elements League started in the graph pit, and then they needed an indoor place, so they started, you know, Tyson Cave. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, they started doing it in his boxing ring. Okay. In Sackville. It was under fucking 
pizza uh, sackful or pizza girls or sackful pizza, pizza. Yeah, you know. <laughs> pizza girls, yeah. It was downstairs in that place. <laughs> and fuck, man, like the battles were great, but a lot of shit, a lot of shit popped off. Oh, there yeah. was lots of fights. Like some battle there was one battle in particular that turned into a fucking boxing match. Yeah. They oh, put shit. the gloves on. I'm not gonna name any names. Well, at least they did it that way. They did it. They put the gloves on, but and Someone still got jumped outside afterwards. It just didn't matter. It was just, yeah. Y'all know who you are. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was gonna, you know who the fuck you are. Man. Oh, shit. Yeah, good time, so. Yeah, see, I missed. I stepped away. Like, back when I was, I, I did music, we was performing with, like, um, like when Ground Squad was still a yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was even before me, before I was into it. Like, yeah, yeah, that was. Because Ground and, Squad was, yeah, that was... Like yeah, for people out there that don't early know who Ground 90s, Squad, right? that was classified yeah, crew. That was early 90s. Yeah, like, yep. Shit. Well... Or late 80s, late 80s, early 90s? Or? No, no, uh... Mid-90s. I'm trying... He's... I'm trying to count how old I am. When did that happen? I thought it would be... It would be late 90s. Mid... High school. Late, yeah, it would have been late... 95, 96-ish? Yeah. yeah. No, I would have only been, like... I would have been too young. It would have been... Late 90s, 98, probably. 90, yeah. Around 98... Into the two thousands, and that's about when I started. Was too, well, well, not, not, not. I started in the nineties, but I didn't start actually recording shit yeah. until I was like thirteen. Man, I remember when on our first album, we class, uh, class used to have a studio down in the South End, and, and we recorded a couple tracks there. Nice. And this is before any of that. Like, I mean, his booth was his closet. We're sitting oh, there yeah, yeah. rapping next to T-shirts hung up. Yeah. My buddy Dizla, man, that's what he. We used to record in his shed in the fucking trailer park in Sackville, in Upper Sackville, Springfield, and we recorded in the shed. When I guess get my booth that I created, yeah, I I put the mic in the middle and had a microwave box, <laughs> and, and you put it, and you had you had your head in a microwave box <laughs> like this. <laughs> it was sound. This sound good. I put uh what. Like egg phones cards. in Eminem M&M basement. Yeah, the egg cartons actually they do there. they yeah. do muffle it. That's bit, what yeah. I mean. You, yeah, that it still was like, funny wrapping into a microwave box, but that was yeah. the biggest box I That's, could find. All ours yeah. was he we, he framed it out himself inside the shed. It was like literally just enough room for me and him to stand in there. One person, the mic just dangling from the corner <laughs> from the ceiling, <laughs> nice. and uh, one moving blanket all the way around. it. And that was it. It was just that small. It would get so fucking hot. I can imagine, man. You go in, especially if you fucked up your verse and had to record it a couple times. It's like, okay, get that one verse done. You got to get out, get some fresh air, open the fucking shed door. And Reminds actually. me of uh, Hustle and Flow. I had to keep turning the fans off. Oh, <laughs> man, it was so bad, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was no fans, though. It was just, <laughs> I remember back just then. Just blunt yeah. smoke and fucking oh, yeah. and ass sweat. It was fucking <laughs> broke. Hey, I- as a, a rapper, how long did it take you? Because it took us a long time to realize that you could punch in. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it took me a while to realize. Because I always, it's, it's not even that it took me a while to realize. I always felt it was unnatural. It was. It took me a while to learn how to properly punch in. So I would just flat out refuse. And I was just like, I knew I could do it if I wanted to, but I didn't. I was just like, no, nope, one take. One take, motherfucker. Anybody would come in. I was, because I was producing a lot of people, too. Yeah. I make beats and shit, too, but somebody would come in, and I'd fucking sit there and make them one take it. Shit. I was such an <laughs> asshole producer. I was just like, ah, oh, you fucked up. They'd be still recording, and they'd fuck something up, and I already heard the verse a few times, and I know they just stumbled a word, so I hit stop, and they're like, what? I'm like, you got to do it again, man. Like, can't we just punch it? I'm like, no. Start from the fucking top. See? That's, a, that's how we did it. Don't now we- I let people punch in, obviously. Uh, I only punched in, and I did well over 50 songs in my life, maybe right. two times. We were always from beginning to end. Beginning well, it to, and it only because it was like a tongue twister, right? And it depends on the production you want. Even yeah. if you can deliver the whole thing, I'll still punch in now. Like, I'll record my first four bars, and then I'll, that's usually how I do it, mm-hmm. just for production quality. Even though I can pull off the whole verse, yeah. it just sounds nicer that way. Yeah. I just, I love actually producing and making the quality of the track sound fucking perfect oh yeah that's it's the performance you worry about that for the performance yeah, exactly. you want the song to sound fucking because it's timeless yeah. it's, not, it's always going to be the, as is yeah like one of my favorite parts is editing and yeah. doing the, the finished project yeah and, and staring and at the screen to until your eyes are buggy like, <laughs> <laughs> you can seamlessly punch it in and and make it 
like you 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 wouldn't even know. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I love that man. Yeah, that's my favorite. Um, so I want to rewind back, and um, for Nathan, I want you to tell us about your experience with Seventeen Bricks, because that was um, because we heard from Leanne, we heard from Mark, so we know uh, their side of things and how it came about. What what about your story with that? Oh, so um, basically, uh, we were uh, you know, we were basically at um, Pat's days. Uh, like uh, they have an event that happens in September, you know, for to, to commemorate for him and stuff, you know, and uh, stay stay day they call it. Yeah. And we were literally there and stuff, hanging all together, hanging all together. And uh, literally somebody was somebody yelled out, "Hey, there's 40 hour challenge and stuff." And Mark basically was like, "No, I don't want to do it." But they eventually convinced him, convinced him and Leanne to do something. And Leanne and Mark basically uh, agreed. They, they were like, "Hey, we need to do do it." So they uh, submitted it towards the the 40 hour challenge and. Literally asked me, hey Nathan, we want you to, we want you to do this character named Kenny, who's a kind of like a, not to think about like he's he's like he's a, basically a cop that is trying to uh, go after his um his, uh, brother's sister. I can't remember. The, 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 it's a puppet. It's, <laughs> it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't remember. It's a, I, my brain thinks I think it's his sister. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, your it's sister. A, it's I, sister. I remember it's been that. Been a while since I've looked at it again, but yeah, it's his sister and stuff. And basically, it was just bit. Uh, um, Basically trying to go after her because she's a, like a drug lord and stuff, and he's trying, she's trying to take him down and stuff. And yeah, we literally shot that during a hurricane. Yes, yeah, I crazy. remember. The power was all going on around. Yeah, the yes. we, we were still so dedicated to craft. We were, we needed to get it done and everything. So yeah, I remember they were telling us that you're you missed on locations because the locations you wanted didn't actually have power. Yeah, next thing you know, they're calling them back like, oh no, we don't have power anymore. Yeah. Next. <laughs> so, so literally after the whole project was done, we went down to Wolfville to actually watch and screen it. And we literally won three or four awards. Um, yep. I, I mean, yeah. I remember those. Yeah, I can't uh, remember all of them right now, but I remember, I, I know Mark and Leanne definitely know they are. But. Yep. We didn't mention them, and I'm not going to say anything so that I don't get them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's on me either. So yeah. Man, <laughs> I'm, it's one of those things where your brain like is fighting to remember. And characters and a couple other ones. Um, they were good ones to have, they're good ones to win. Man. Yeah, they were good ones. They yeah. were like prestige Best ones. I remember that. Or I can't remember. Best oh, directing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, go check the episode. Yeah, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> yeah. They list it. They let everybody know what their awards were too. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's that's dope. Um, you guys ever think of doing that again? Yeah. Um, I think they might be interested in doing it again this coming September. I think when it happens, or when, you know, we have, we have we do Atlantic again. We might try to submit. We might try another film. And try something else, but. Again, I think we're going to do it, but I'm not 100% sure what Mark and Leanne have in store. I don't know how they mentally and physically pulled that off because I would fucking lost, I would have lost my shit trying to do that in two days. Yeah. There's no way, man. Even just doing the short film, yeah. what, did, what did we have? Two weeks? Yeah, a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. It was a couple of weeks to pull the whole, three weeks, I think it was, from yeah. start to finish to pull the team together mm. and film it and produce it. I was, even that three weeks was too long or too doing, short. And they're doing it in 24. 48 hours. 48 hours, I was like, man, those guys are fucking genius yeah. to be able to pull that off. We Mark like, is a fucking genius. Like, I love working with Mark. Mark is fucking, he's he's fun, he's not a dick, and he's super fucking creative. Like, yeah, yeah. He's so fucking quick with on the fly. Like, Yeah, I only met him the once, and I, I got that You can tell, too. like, yeah. yeah, he just gives off that, I'm an artist vibe. <laughs> 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 I'm a fucking creative genius. Yeah. We and comedic, like, too. Like, he's actually hilarious he's yeah he used to do stand up yeah yeah he's fucking hilarious yeah, i was gonna say we literally shot during a hurricane and there's like these crates we had like these uh like a ship like a container shipyard we, we went out and shot in the rain and everything and Those the, whole, the whole fight scene out there and everything they had it was it was crazy in a storm in a hurricane <laughs> yeah, it was like a movie, yeah. yeah in the bay in the yeah. underground park in there in the under, yeah. yeah and then there's, there's one we did where we, we did the whole thing where, where there's like tires and stuff and i'm like Literally with uh, Ray Ray, she's like, uh, it's like a model, and she has OnlyFans and stuff. And literally, she was my co-lead in that, and we literally shot in a car. And uh, yeah, she was like right in my character the whole time. My character was like, no, I need to focus on the I, word. Yeah. And yeah, and literally that whole scene just happened during Hurricane in like near the tan yard in, in, in uh, one Pleasant Park. So. Yeah, like she's got, she's got like over half a million followers on her fucking socials, man. Like she's, oh, really? she's. Booming, she's like, oh, really? yeah. Did she, did she do a lot of acting and stuff? I guess just, I don't know how much other acting she does other than with Mark. That's yeah. 
but Mark hires her on quite a bit for roles, and I don't know what else she does. She do other. I guess we she gotta... played the mother in Unreasonable Rob. So, yeah, she yeah. plays. Right. Yeah, she plays Pat or Rob's mother. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, I guess we should invite her up here for an episode. You could. Oh no, yeah, she she's she brings some lady. numbers in, I believe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she brings all the whole. The guys are just you just, you just uh. <laughs> the guys are just going crazy, yeah, yeah. man. I mean, she 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 might bring some milkshake. <laughs> yeah, bring it to the yard. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just for the numbers. Yeah, yeah no. no, I know. But yeah. <laughs> I like them. Numbers are numbers good. are good. Like um, and subscribe. Uh, let's talk about Buddy Wild. That's coming soon. Yeah. Uh, how did you two get involved in that? Um. So I, I got involved with um, with Mark and Leanne basically reaching out and being like, hey, we want to do a, we want to do a, a feature film. And it was kind of like a present for Leanne's birthday. And she, she's uh, trying to do it's basically It's, just, it's basically a birthday present for her, so, for Mark. And uh, literally, I, they reached out and been like, hey, we want, want you to play this character that's like a non-verbal character. He doesn't speak at all in the film. He's, he's, uh, he's got a few problems here and there, you'll notice. And, you know, there's something that's wrong with him. And uh, literally... During the whole film, I'm just hunting for chupies in the wild. <laughs> and, 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 it's, and, and you'll notice it's a post-nuclear world, so things are very um, futuristic, but very in the past in the same second. So, mm. for instance, there's flying cars, and there's, like, phones are looking futuristic, but they live in cabins in the middle of the woods with fires, and you don't see any any modern stuff at all. It's just mostly just woods. And, cool. and there's this creature called the Witch, which is played by Frank Kirby, of course. And yeah, he's basically trying to hunt us down. So yeah, we discussed about the witch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I right. was quite intrigued with that episode. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was like, wow. I, I didn't even know that. Like, yeah. I didn't know it yeah, was, was a fucking based, based on, on a, a true, true story. story. Yeah, that like, was, was something, right? It's like not the story, but based on a true character. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. they yeah. just kind yeah, of they, took that and they ran yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah that's a but better way. But it's still like, yeah. <laughs> Did you go and watch the actual video? No. There's actual videos of this fucking witch? Yeah. yeah. Okay, e- no. Car- I haven't like, watched the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, 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 well. like, I, I couldn't watch it. It was like trail cam footage of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's actual witch eating. Eating dogs, probably. Yeah, or animals or something, I think. So, yeah, in, in, in the trail. It was like some kind of carcass. It was a human. Eating or something. chupacabras. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chupacabras. Yeah. Eating chupacabras. Yeah. Nice. And um, so what is your role in the film? Uh, see, I wasn't even really supposed to be in the film very much like mark decided he wanted a couple people in the background for this like a diner scene and i was just some drunk no dialogue i'm just drunk in the background and then it just i don't want to give too much away obviously but he just mark never really fully has a plan with what he's gonna do he comes up with ideas as they're going so like he thought he was wrapped, I was wrapped, and then next thing you know, he's like, now I need you to come back. I've got an idea for you. And then, Mark does that a lot, eh? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he and thinks, I he to thinks he's done. That's why it's like the next scene that we wrap up on Sunday. Yeah. I feel like it It should be the last scene, but Mark, you know Mark. He's, he's always like, oh, he's got, there's going to be something else that needs to be filmed. You right? always know. You're like, oh, you're, you're done. You're whole wrap, Nathan, and then he'll come kill us two weeks later. Hey, we got another scene we want you to do. Well, I think Frank was wrapped three times. Or yeah. something. <laughs> and then he just kept getting him to come back, getting him to come back. Me and Frank just worked in the fucking freezing cold. I don't know if you saw clips of that. Of was that me, the... Me, like, outside. Yes, that, Frank, that is yeah. a clip I... It was fucking snowing that day, and it was like minus eleven or whatever the fuck. It was cold as shit yeah. that day, and I that beater I was, I was wearing a dirty white wife beater. Yeah. The fucking Mark just filled with vinegar and like barbecue sauce and ketchup <laughs> and all that shit. He just dirtied it all up. We had no time to dry the shit. Oh. So it was soaked. So I'm oh, out there. I'm fuck. just like. I was actually cold. Like I, I let the cold take over. Like I wasn't actually shivering the whole time. But like as soon as he said action, I was just like, all right, let the cold fucking just ruin me for this. And it sold it. The, the fact that it was cold really fucking sold that yeah, yeah. Uh, that acting. And the same fact we we shot in a cabin for like a week and literally like no fire, yeah, no yeah, coal or no heaters, like nothing. No, nothing. We were outside, basically in the woods and stuff. You know, just America's just like you know, Nathan, you gotta you gotta go full force. You gotta you gotta just take it like a man. Like it's <laughs> and yeah, we literally, yeah, literally shot. And if I didn't say it, I do play Buddy Wild. I play the main character in it. And um, 
yeah, basically, yeah. It was it just me and me and Leanne basically r- running in the woods in the cold, basically hunting chupacabras, being chased by this witch, and basically I don't want to, that I'm not want to give it too much away, but that's been the the main concept of it. And me learning how to hunt, and me learning how to uh, become a man in the woods. So you know, become a become a man basically. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a concept. <laughs> so, yeah. Sounds like Mark's making us do some method acting. Oh, they got the guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you get forced into method acting yeah, working with right? him. He's like an acting. Like he's, he says, "No, I'm not. No, man. Like he's he is an acting coach. Like the guy has got acting chops. Yeah, every he time, literally. Every time you're there, he's like super. He's super adamant. Like on like get making sure you get everything right. Make sure making sure you're acting right and stuff. He wants to make sure you look good in that film, right? right and right, right. he's very good with uh, like he'll just improv lines and feed you lines to say. Mm-hmm. It's just what he wants. He's like, okay, or actually no, say it like this. Say it like this, and then he'll feed you the line again. And just keep feeding you lines, and he's just, just like, "Okay, this is perfect. This is great. This is great. Beautiful. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that was amazing." <laughs> or you'll see him, be like, "Yes, we got yes. It. you yeah. know, you know when you're you know making him happy." Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, he is he is amazing to fucking work with. Like it's to see him, like watch him in his element yep. doing his shit. Like, Creative genius. Yeah. He is, right. man. Like. I I actually found the location that we filmed that that outdoor scene with me and Frank, and uh, it was actually my cousin's property. My cousin Nick let us use his property, nice. and uh, it's just a big clearing. That's where he's building his house. So as <laughs> soon as Mark walks in, he was just like, "Oh wow!" He's walking around and he, oh, he's like shit. getting climbing in the bushes. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's the shot. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. I don't yes. think I ever ever seen anyone other than in the movies do that shit. He does it. It's a real <laughs> thing. Yeah. Like he gets yeah. right into it. He's like he's right in the zone as soon as he gets there, and it's like it's, it's so fun cool to watch. It. Yes. It's so cool to see him do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, like he's got a uh, he's got a vision, and then when you're, you see it on the screen, it's like you're confident he's gonna do a great uh, job for you. Like yeah. Yeah. Like he's been showing us little teasers and sneak peeks, like as he's been producing, and like. Every couple of days, he sends me just a little teaser, and I'm just like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, Do you guys have any idea when it's going to be finished and released? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they, they, still on track from the last time I spoke with you guys. Okay. Um, I think they're, they have to have it wrapped up. I forget what the date It was, was. Uh, June the 14th or 15th, somewhere in the middle of June. Yeah. And because then it has to be done and submitted, submitted. for the Atlantic it, 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 yeah. September In September, the thing it, that should be during the film festival in September, if, if they get in. So we, if we they get in, they that's in. when it'll be released. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Other than, otherwise, like, other than that, like Atlantic Film Festival is very strict with stuff like that. Like They can't pre-release. They can't do anything. They can't yeah. do screenings. No. Yeah, that, Not even that, a private screening. That I remember. Atlantic Film Festival has that's to be. That's your private screening. That's, that's the so premiere, yeah. Yeah, I remember that's what he was telling me. I Which is good, that. though. It's a lot of exposure. Yeah, it was yeah. yeah, yeah oh. for sure. It's you get networking. You see people that are in the same industry as you. You get to meet new people. You're yeah. able to, yeah, I get, get a lot that's of networking. A, that's a good network professional project. premiere, really. Yeah. It's. It doesn't get any more official either, really. Yeah, no, true. True. So um, I want to ask about the um, CBC short film face-off, because I've never heard about that until you this guys mentioned it. This was a first for us, too. I yeah, had no. no idea what it was. Megan somehow found it, and we, she found it very late in the fucking game. We had three <laughs> weeks left. <Yeah. laughs> three weeks was our deadline of submission, and we had it submitted by... Like 11.30 that night, it was like midnight was the closing time. And we had it in like a half hour before it closed. And um, so how, how does it all work? Like, what is it? Is it something that people can see all the films face it's off? It's actually or? a series. Yeah, it's a oh, okay. It's, like it's a, a TV show on CBC. Like, they actually, it's, they've got a, there's a host and everything. Like, it almost reminded me of Fear Factor. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to look back and I was like, why is she so serious? Like, why is this? I don't know. Like, but it's yeah. There's a host, and then they have like uh, producers and directors go on the show. I, I, I'm not sure about the whole format, but okay. each episode is I think one or two short film or two, a couple of short films, and then in the end, Canada votes on their favorite short film in the whole series of CBC short film Face Off. Sounds like yeah. Big Brother. Yeah, all <laughs> seasons. I've seen like yeah. 15 seasons of it. Really. Man. Oh. Yeah, there's a, it's been around for a while. Oh, you've watched 15 seasons or no? There, that's there are, fifth, there are 15 oh, okay. seasons of the show. Yeah, which has been around for a while. So yeah, man, it's just I, strange. I never actually heard of it until me neither, now. man. 
I it's, guess it's, you don't really notice that stuff until you get into yeah. to that stuff. Yeah, yeah. making it. Like, yeah. Fuck. Well, these are our oppor- these are our chances and their opportunities, things that are on the table. Like, yeah. So it was the first thing we we found that we we could jump at. So, nice, nice. and it's I like mean, driving to your car. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't ever see that car on the road until you're in that car. Right? Yeah. Well, it's so. me. Nathan and I got together and we created a baby. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm so happy seeing from where we were at. We, uh, we never thought it would come to what it did. So yeah, it's, 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 it's our dream baby. What? Which one's mom? Which one's dad? I would say Nathan's the mother. Yeah, oh, the mother. <laughs> <laughs> he's been nurturing us very, very well through this whole thing. Like yeah. we, it, every time it seems like things start fall, derailing a little bit. It's mm-hmm. not really. I shouldn't say it's derailed. It's just we, we all live full lives. Like I've got two kids and. We, we all have full-time jobs. Yeah. Everyone on the team right, has right, full-time right, right. jobs. So, but if if Nathan notices the groups get a little quiet mm-hmm. and people are just kind of not really active, he's like, okay, we got to do this. we got to get back on track, we gotta man. we got to get the screening yeah. done. Like, I, I see the vision. But I see what's at doing. the same time, I've never forgot it. Like, I wake up and the fucking show is in the back of my head. Like, yeah. it's never going to leave my head because this mm. is our, like I said, this is our baby. Like, right? yeah. So... In the long run, yeah, the, the series is happening. We're going to aim for six episodes. Mm. We've already got a lot of people interested in working with us as well, like names and stuff that are that oh. people know. Like I don't know if you know Gerald Schmelzer. No. He's a he's he's a comedian. He does his own like he's got quite a following going on, yeah. but he's funny. He does like the uh, I don't want to. I can't fucking do his imp- impression because I just can't. Pull no, it I can't. Up. But he has a big t- TikTok. He really got big off TikTok. I know. It's yeah, just, yeah. Lots of views. Started. Lots of people know who he is too. Yeah. But awesome. Yeah, there's a few people. I don't really want to name too many names because it's not really official yet. No, but so we're still in the we're still fleshing out characters and writing right, right, scripts right, right, right. and stuff like that. But we got a lot of people interested in working yeah. on the show, which is good. So, um, would this short film serve as a pilot? Would you say for the show? Yeah. That was kind of the plan, yeah. It was okay. the fact that we managed to get the short film together. Now we have a body of work. And like Jeff, our cinematographer, said, he's like, man, this this has legs. He's like, I'm not just saying it because I'm on the project. The guy fucking, him and Jordan both drove from Truro every day to film and fucking, and then Jordan mm-hmm. came out and st- he was at my house all day for two days in a row. Drove from Churro, and we just cooped ourselves up in the studio and fucking edited away. Nice. So the dedication is there. Like, they see what we see in the project, and that's the main thing. It's everybody has the same dream. Everybody has the same goal, and we all want to see this show do do well. So, like he said, this short film now, it's a body of work, and he said, not like I said, not to be biased because he's a part of the project. He thinks it has legs. Like, if we pitch this around, and then plus if we do the series, I don't know. There, there's a lot to really take in when it comes to this stuff because there's a lot of different avenues and ways that you can approach um, doing the show, like especially when it comes to funding. Because okay. we have no money. <laughs> we have fucking no money. We know how that feels. Yeah, yeah, we know how that feels. So, <laughs> just by having no money, we're still able to pull off everything we did. Yeah, is, yeah. is mind blowing to me. Everything has been out of pocket, like. Yeah. Yeah, so as far as funding and stuff, I don't know where we're at. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're working on it. We're looking yeah. around to different networks and stuff. We want to see eventually <laughs> if uh, CBC Film Face Off gets back to us to see if we made it or not. Yeah, we're we'd like to know that. But if we, I'd say if we mid summer or in September, if we don't hear anything, maybe even sooner than that, if we don't hear anything, maybe we'll just be like, hey, we, we'll just go to different other different networks and see. And we're just going to start so, shooting. Yeah. Yeah, and we're if, just if we don't anyway. fucking hear anything back, we're just gonna start shooting and yeah. we're gonna make a show. Mm. So oh, yeah. No matter what, yeah, the yeah. fucking show is happening. Yeah. Right. It's happening. Now, the problem with our crew is they actually do film and video in as their full time jobs. Mm. Okay. So when they're not around, I don't know what the fuck we're gonna do unless unless Mark or we find some more other cinematographers and directors to help us. But gotcha. Um, it'll happen. Yeah, we've, right. we've got gonna, the drive. We've got the determination and the yeah, drive, yeah, and we've got the cool. cast and crew, and we've like, we've got the, the story, everything all all worked out. It's just fleshing out that script now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is good. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's good to hear. So, aside from um, this project, do you have any other things you guys are working on in the future? Start with you first, Nate. Um, 
right now, n not uh, nothing, nothing set in stone, but I definitely can feel something's going to happen. Um, yeah, definitely, hopefully trying to do some more background work over the summer with some shows, and uh, hopefully try try to get an agent, you know, at least at least an agent to see if I can get help me get some work as well and things like that. And uh, but right now, you know, pretty pretty quiet, but it's still still the start. It's still just before the summer, but yeah. I feel things are going to pick up. I, feel, I have a good feeling of it. So, yeah. Cool. How about yourself? I'm working on an album. I don't want to say too much about it, but I did just <laughs> write two new songs okay. on the weekend there. So. Oh, two, two songs yeah, on yeah, the weekend? Yeah, two that's, songs back to back. Nice. Fucking, I sent Nathan a little preview of it. Um, really good. Of one of them. Um, working with a producer from uh, Cape Breton. Uh, fuck, he said he's just outside of Glace Bay. I can't remember what the fucking town is. It's very small town outside of Glace Bay, though. I know that. Okay. He goes by Oracular. Oracular. And I never heard of him. It was a buddy of mine, Joey Webb, actually, introduced me to him. Because he moved out to Cape... He's from Saffron, but moved out to Cape Breton. Okay. Somehow met this guy. And he makes some fucking dirty, dope-ass boom bap. <laughs> just my style. Like, if you listen to the... I listened to the beats, and I was like... I made that, yeah. I made that beat. <laughs> Just yeah. exactly my style. So I was like, okay. I messaged him and I fucking sent him some of my shit. And, and he showed me some of his beats and he was like, okay, yeah. I'll work with you. I was like, I want to make an album with you. And he was like, okay, yeah, let's do that. And fucking ever since then, it's like, that's all history. Like, he sent me 30 fucking plus, 37, 36 beats or something like that. Shit. All fucking boom bap bangers. I got all these beats to choose from. So I was like, okay. Wrote that song, sent it to him. He was like, okay. Sent him another one. And he was like, okay, this is going to be a fucking dope body of work. <laughs> like, That's awesome, man. So, yeah, I, I definitely had to bring that up. Man. Oh, and when you're closer to being done and stuff, you want to talk about it, definitely come up here. Yeah, we're we're yeah. all about hip-hop. Yeah, yeah. You know bring I mean? up some sample tracks for oh, you guys yeah. to listen to and shit. Nice, nice. Yeah. I love, love supporting. And I go by Scrimmage. Talent. I don't know if I even scrimmage? mentioned that. Yeah, Scrimmage. scrimmage yeah. Okay, so I have heard of you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay. Nice. yeah, I've been doing it for a while, miss. I'm trying to remember who was that said your name. Unless he was taking on actually. But like I like I told you earlier, like I I toured around the province with Jay Brew and Jordan yeah. and uh I don't know if you remember S Class. Remember him? White rapper. <sighs> I don't know how long he was in the game. I remember his name. But he was really fucking good. And I don't know where he, whatever yeah. happened to him. And not, not Seth. I always, Seth? Special K. Special K. He's, he just <laughs> dropped some shit recently. Oh, see, I, man. Special K. I don't know <laughs> how hard into it he still is, but like, because, you know, he's I, a family guy now. I went, I went, yeah, I went to school with him. Yeah, yeah. He was, he had knocking him down. That was the sickest shit, man. That was one of my favorite <laughs> videos. It was a cartoon video. Yeah. Man, I didn't see that. I see that. A class made the beat. It was sick. I don't know who. There was the fucking animators from the gorillas or something. It was much music. Oh, yeah, was much music funded that shit. Big, yeah. Wait. It was much video facts and stuff. They would they would grant give people grant. I remember money. that now. I yeah. remember. Yes. It was literally the fucking the gorillas animator. Wow. The wow. same animation. That's what it was. And it was yeah. so good, like, <laughs> and it's Special K. He's like this tiny dude in a to this little tiny little white guy in the fucking boxing <laughs> ring, and he's fighting fucking Mike Tyson, yeah. and he's like this big, massive version of Mike Tyson. He's like, here's Special K, and here's this fucking this guy he's fighting. The ring. <laughs> but then he smashes him, like beats the shit out of him. I, as far as I recall, good stuff, man. I, that was a good time for music, local, like local hip hop. I find. I, I find local hip hop. At least in my opinion, yeah, it's making a good comeback now. Cause it's starting to like yeah. Quake's last album was dope. Yeah, um, Luke, oh, sorry, Classified's last album. Luke's was dope. view. I didn't yeah, hear Luke's the new. Man. I haven't heard the new one. I've seen uh, some of the videos and stuff that come out, but uh, I don't know if I've heard every song. Um, man, but it's he, so far, I've I've liked it. Like, it's it's. it's good, really. I really like it. Like lyrically, this is fine. Like usually back in the older stuff, his lyrics didn't really resonate with me. I loved his older shit, like three beats and an MC and shit. But like, I really love that style of beats and stuff. He's really oh, his changed. beats is all. He's never hit, missed a beat with a beat. No, <laughs> he's missed so a beat with a beat. I know. Yeah, his beats. Well, he was a big inspiration to me. Like, uh, uh, was the uh, that I smoke my weed. I love my weed. 
I, oh, it's sickening. That song. That was a good song. I don't know if you ever heard that. I found I that, that randomly at a fucking party, and I was like, "Who the hell is this guy?" And it was like not till years later. I was listening to this song on a CD. It was just a mixtape, and that was the only classified song on there. Had no idea it was local. And then I fucking heard. I actually heard somebody playing that song, and they had the full album. And I was like, "Who is this fucking guy?" They're like classified man. He's from Halifax. And I was like, "What?" And well, I didn't know he was actually from Enfield. Yeah, but Enfield. he was living in Halifax, I think, at the time. So, I've uh, yeah. When I initially, that was like late nineties. Mm -hmm. I met him, and he lived in South End. So he's yeah. been in Halifax. Well, yeah, he was in Halifax long enough for to be bit. saying yeah. that he's from Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's H. Is Enfield's part of H R M? Is it? No, I can't remember. Is it? I don't mm -hmm. know. No. It wasn't officially HRM before? Wasn't officially, but it is now. What was that, Colchester County? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> you just freestyled I thought that, that was it. On point. I thought that was all fucking Halifax, or I thought it was Halifax the whole time. Yeah. It's so close. It so what, 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 what time are we talking again? All right, Enfield, you said? Yeah. It's uh, East Hans. East Hans. Not, 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 not Colchester. Colchester. East Hans, yeah. Only because I've, I've done yeah. work Colchester's there. like Truro, Truro and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, now it's classified as HRM. That's what you're what? It's what? classified as huh? HRM. Hey, <laughs> there you go. Is this <laughs> 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 because of, uh, as you can see, Halifax is getting bigger. We double our population oh, yeah. in True. the last True. 10 years, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's now expanded out that come to Windsor is HRM, to, what is it now, Hubbard's is HRM, right? <laughs> yeah, so to Muscadab and Harbor is HRM. What? So, yeah, like, <laughs> Maybe they, they got they figured so would have been like. Maybe they got tired of tell, trying to explain to yeah. people that Halifax, <laughs> Halifax Stanfield Airport isn't in Halifax. Yeah, it's exactly. like now it is. Now, yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty Muscadabit much was Muscadabit County. Yeah, so it's pretty much anything like within forty five minutes of the city is not classified as HR. Right? Holy fuck! Yeah. yeah, Halifax has grown a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although it does piss me off the times when they say that something cool is coming to Halifax, like, yeah, then they're, yeah, Dartmouth Cross, and I'd like, that ain't Halifax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, especially with me for my food channel, like, new restaurant coming, yeah, Halifax Cross, and well, then that's a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dartmouth <laughs> Cross. No, oh, I said Halifax Cross. <laughs> Halifax Cross. HRM. <laughs> HRM. Halifax HRM Cross. <laughs> It is HRM. I, I was guess. like, so don't tell me they're building a Halifax cross. I wouldn't no. be surprised. Fuck. No, I wouldn't. No. They're expanding on Bayers Lake, though. Yeah. They're making that bigger. There's going to be a hospital out there. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's going to be like. Uh, what, that hospital is going to be impossible to fucking get to. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be similar to the one that's open uh, Sackville there. Cobbquid. So, yeah. <laughs> Something similar to that, right? So, so you'll be sitting there for a whole day waiting to get somebody <laughs> to look at you. Yep. And then it closes down at 12 o'clock. Okay, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. Yeah, I think it closes down at like 12 or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, I mean, call yeah. security because I'm not fucking leaving. Yeah. <laughs> that is a busy place. Yes. My mother had an appointment there and I took her to her. She's like, no, don't don't come in. I'll, I'll be in and out. Mm. I had like a two hour nap <laughs> oh, before she got back. There was one time where I was in and out and I was like, it's just my jaw was dropped up and dropped. <laughs> I was so fucking surprised. I was like, why was that so fast? <laughs> like, Do I stink? You must have went at 1130 at night. I don't know why. I don't remember what time it was, but probably. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I was just coughing on everybody and they're like, we can get this guy Yeah, to get fuck him you. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Cause Costco is like, no matter what time of day, no matter what time, yeah, it's always busy. It's like Costco is just... Costco? Yeah. yeah Costco fuck. is just always busy. I've I been to DVDs. Costco once and I don't really ever think I'll buy a membership. No. <laughs> Unless it's, it's probably worth it, though. It can be worth it. Get things yeah. in bulk. Right, you want to talk about busy, talk about Gateway. Mm. Oh, that oh, is yeah. crazy. I see the lineup every time I go yeah. by. And I'm that just is like, crazy. It goes fast. Don't get me wrong, but... Surprisingly, does yeah. Does Just it? seeing the lineup deters me from not going. Yeah, so. you want to go on a nice day. I, I drove yeah. by and it was piss pouring rain, and I'm just seeing all these people. I'm like, holy fuck! Like, <laughs> you know that's fucking sad yeah. Yeah. that we all have to resort to doing this shit because it's the cheapest fucking yeah. alternative. Yeah. And meanwhile, Sobies and all these like Loblaws, all that shit, jacking their fucking prices up. Oh, are they? Yeah, this. Uh, my, so host, my household is boycotting them. Are you guys boycotting them? <laughs> um, my folks say, are, they mentioned something about it, but I don't know. Like, I, did, I where the fuck else am I going to get my groceries? You know, I at? say that, and then on Sunday, that's why I went and got Mother's Day stuff. Yeah. yeah. But it also <laughs> pisses me off, because it was when COVID hit, they stopped their fucking, you used to be able to go, any, like, and I used to work around the clock, so sometimes I didn't get home till after fucking midnight. Mm -hmm. So if I'm hungry or I want to cook something or get some, get, I need groceries. Yeah. Then I had I had the option. Now you don't. 
No, you don't. They fucking close at eight on weekends in Sackville, and then uh, nine in First Lake. Somebody, uh, uh, my woman told me ten, so I drove up and I was like, no, it's fucking closed. <laughs> nine o'clock at the latest. I know Joe Howe and Bears Lake is ten o'clock. Do they not want fucking money? I don't get it. I, I know, I know why they stopped it, right? Because yeah. of the thing, but that's done. That's what I said. I said it's <laughs> over. And then I had a friend who worked at the liquor store. She said, "Oh, don't don't say that. We don't want to go back to work until 10. I was like, "Oh my god, not 10 o'clock!" <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! I know. Like after we went to the comedy gala on uh, when did I go? No, oh, Saturday, and we had some drinks there. And I was like, "Man, I want to continue this when we get home." Then I looked. Yeah, nine o'clock. I was like, when did they? No, now you have to go find a bar. You have to go find or, another bar. Or uh, we have a West Side. It's this place in Lacewood. Yeah, stays open till eleven. Oh, sells all the same liquor for like a dollar. Oh, that's like uh, adds a dollar onto it. That was like that place out in fucking way out yonder there, bum fuck nowhere. Um, West Side Charlie's? You, no, no, that liquor store. It was like there. It's like a little. Oh, oh, those are like those little hidden gems, like yeah, yeah, like Eddie's yeah. out in fucking Ma Mount Uniac. Yeah, but okay. then there's another one. It's way out in fucking. Uh, I can't think of the name now. Like too. Rodden or something. Yeah, Rodden. Yeah, South Rodden. Yeah, South Rodden or something. It's way out the fuck out there. But yeah, uh, yeah they're open till eleven o'clock at night, yeah. and then they're open stupid early in the morning yeah. too. And on a Sunday at, at six o'clock, everything else is closed, or five o'clock, everything else is closed. They're still open till yeah, eleven. Yeah, I uh, I seen I seen that with these. Two. Uh, for anyone out there, if you want booze and it's past 10 o'clock, West Side, Clayton Park, yeah. pay us. <laughs> the other place, oh, the place I was thinking of, I think it's called XLR or something like that. XLR, is, yeah, it's something like that. It's just a three letter place. Okay. Man. They yeah. got really good beef jerky, too. <laughs> jerky and pe homemade beef jerky and pepperoni. It must be locally, locally made, right? Okay. That's fun. Uh, I know. There's no Chris Brothers pepper. Oh, Mount Uniac Way. There's this corner store that also has a liquor store in it too. That's uh, and I don't think yes. I'm, I don't think I've yes. ever been there. Yes, they okay, got pepperoni, yeah. All that shit. That's where I got that So that's probably why they're open later because they got the corner yeah, store. Yeah, they, they got the they got the liquor store plus the other. But yeah, they got pepperoni. Got some whole smoke holes. Nice. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, what? what Two boys. I still haven't had that yet. I haven't. I've never even heard of it until now. Two boys is what's called. I gotta try that place. I haven't even tried the uh, Five Guys Burgers and Fries. Don't. Uh, is it though? It's good. Is it though? I always said don't. I thought don't, you said dope. Don't, don't, don't. I tried it too. It's like it's, a, it's not the hype. Is I just remember it's watching that guy's good. review and no, he it ain't like it. that. It ain't like, like that. Damn, damn. I know. Damn. <laughs> I was like, man, I need that fucking burger yeah. now. Uh, <laughs> I had that burger. You ain't getting all that. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, Get yourself the double cheeseburger. <laughs> I, the fries were soggy. Oh no! My burger was. Oh soggy. man, really? Yeah, man. Their fries was. It, the burger yeah. looked sloppy in fuck guy's video. Like yeah. it was like a just a it, shitty I mean, McDonald's the, bun or something. Like, like. Sloppy, sloppy. Oh. The the sauce was coming through the bun. Oh yeah. So, I mean, when I had it, oozing. it was good. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. I'm back to eating cheese again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I told you they get getting. Still no beef and pork, though. Yeah, yeah, good luck with Wait, that. When you talk about the guy that goes, damn, damn. I yeah. know his, his name's, uh, what's, uh, the his name's fella, Dan. Right? He's a big I think guy. he's Dan's Eats. I don't remember like his that. real name. You know, yeah, you know he's, he's a big fella. He's always like, more and more and more. He's super loud. He's super, he, he does food roos in his car. And his, yeah, and he's always a big, he's a, yeah, big, big black guy. Probably, maybe it's probably around your age, I'd say, probably, yeah. What's his fucking color have to do with it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> I'm more about the age. Did you call me old? Like, what's going <laughs> on here? <laughs> Probably about your yeah, age. I can't remember yeah. his fucking name. Uh, I knew he was hilarious. So just his reaction to that fucking burger would have me dying. I can't remember back. I can see his face. I just can't really. <coughs> <coughs> we watched that so many remember. fucking times. Like, I watched the song. Remember yeah. when it did the auto tune and all that? I, I had that on the playlist. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> me and my cousin Muse, Alex Muse, would just fucking die listening to that shit. Dang. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my, my damn. damn. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's going ham. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah, it's pretty bad when you memorized all the fucking yeah. lyrics to a few. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. Man, that was crazy. Shmo Yo Ho, I think they make all those remix songs. Okay. That's the channel. Shmo Yo Ho. They oh. got a whole bunch of them, man. I'm gonna look for that because that's the only one I listen to. <laughs> yeah. So they did all oh, wait, the no. remix videos. What was that? Uh same with the uh Hide Your Wife, Hide Your Kids. Yeah. That one? I think they did him and then they did the the Kai, the 
the hat hatchet wielding hitchhiker. What? I never even heard of that before. Yes, you did. The he said, and they broke. The, uh, he could have broke her neck like a pencil stick. Uh, what did he fuck? How did that one go? <laughs> that one's funny as shit. That one's that guy's actually in jail. He fucking killed a guy. Oh shit! With a hatchet. Uh. This guy was fucking trying to kill people with his car. He had a guy like pinned between his car and another car, and he was he was this guy. It was he hitchhiked and caught a ride with this dude. So he was in the passenger seat while this guy's like. He told him, he said he's Jesus Christ or something, and he can do whatever the fuck he wants. So he sees this woman or this guy, I think it was a woman, and he pinned her up against the truck and wouldn't fucking let her out. So buddy oh. fucking, the hitchhiker ended up fucking cutting him up, like killed him with this hatchet. I don't know if he cut his hat off or what, but he fucking killed him with this hatchet. And he got away for a while. Like he was, he was on fucking Jimmy Kimmel or some shit. Like they oh, had yeah, him I on heard, talk shows, yeah. Is that the guy you're talking about? Yep, that's, that's the that, cheeseburger that's, guy. That's the guy. That's the guy. That's <coughs> what I'm talking about. Yeah. But Kai, Kai the damp. hitchhiker or something. That you need to check that guy out. All right. That shit's it. insane. Crazy. Killing drops. Yep. Damn drops. Yep. Damn drops. See, I knew it was damn. <laughs> damn drop. Damn something. I know. <laughs> I think after that he probably changed his name to Damn. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, man, man. I got that image. I didn't even see it yet. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> hitchhiker. <talking about? laughs> yeah, I can't get that on my head. I missed something. I'm the hitchhiker that killed the they did. killed the driver. Yeah. Oh, he was in the middle of finding that. I was in the middle of finding that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. He, he missed was, the story. Sorry, that. guys. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I'll definitely search that. Sorry, I heard the story when I watched. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys will definitely yeah. have to. Check All right. That out. All right. So I'm gonna wrap things up here. Yeah. Um, he's he's scarred now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, what the fuck is wrong with you? As always, uh, rambles on and then something crazy comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. Uh, also, you're the me of the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the, I'm the dark one. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, want to thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, also, uh, always want you both to feel anytime you got something to promote. Anytime you just want to talk, like you can come up here and talk hip hop any anytime. Well, just hit me up, man. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. You know. yeah. Well, I just point. He's, he's pointing him out because right? he's a rapper. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Come on, you can't exclude the abs, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to give ab secrets? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, yeah, pleasure having you guys on. Um, thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for It's good to be able to fucking yeah. actually talk about the stuff. Like, cause This way we can kind of just send people to one source instead of... Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. If you want to learn about everything that we're doing, here, go check this out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll see yeah. the trailer, too. Cause thanks for watching, that. everybody. You yeah, guys are the best. You, yeah. <laughs> just have your spouses also so now you don't have to keep talking to them about it, too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John Kizzy, you know who is he, a.k.a. Philly G, because they know who I be. Here with King Tigger. The King of Kings. Special guest, Nathan. And Kyle. And we're... Peace. Peace.